Are you in a healthy relationship or are you in a toxic relationship? If you're dealing with a narcissist, your red flags might be a little different than they would be if you're dealing with someone who's not a narcissist. We're going to talk about red flags that might mean a relationship's in trouble and what the difference is in a healthy relationship and a narcissistic one. Have you found yourself ever being treated like the most amazing person on the planet only to later be treated like some sort of burden or problem in your partner's life? to put it mildly. Whether or not you're in a relationship with a narcissist sometimes might seem irrelevant to you personally. And that's because labels or no, your relationship might be in trouble. So how can you really tell the difference between a narcissist who's love bombing you or a more healthy partner who's interested in you. You might be surprised to know that that's actually one of the biggest questions I hear from readers, clients, and viewers. How to know the difference between a narcissist love bombing and a normal person who is just generally interested in you. Here's the thing, whether or not you're in a relationship with a narcissist, every single relationship on the planet of the romantic nature is going to have a certain point of no return. So when it gets to this point, you may not be able to fix the relationship. And sometimes when you're dealing with narcissists in say a parental relationship, it can cause your romantic relationship to go bad. However, sometimes you might be dealing with a narcissist and not know it. Why is it so hard to tell the difference between someone love bombing and someone who's actually interested in you on a healthy level? Seems pretty logical, right? Well, the fact is that on the outside, someone who is a love bomber and someone who is healthy, who has actually fallen in love, they might appear to be pretty similar. But there are some subtle differences that are often overlooked when we are sort of under the spell of new love. Some of those differences might surprise you. You probably already know that statistically speaking, Speaking, nearly everyone is willing to overlook certain little flaws in the beginning of a relationship and nearly everyone is probably a little more careful with how they treat their partners and what they say to them early in the relationship. And even in these so-called normal relationships, as time goes on, nearly everyone finds something that used to be super cute or at least tolerable about their partners that becomes at least a little bit irritating, right? Nearly everyone argues and nearly everyone admits that they've been mean to their partner when they didn't need to at one time or another. So how do we know what is the difference between healthy relationship interest and love bombing from a narcissist. What differentiates a normal healthy relationship from a toxic one? You might be dealing with a narcissist and not know it. I'm going to share with you some tips that I have found are big red flags in any relationship and if you find yourself seeing these red flags you might take the time to evaluate whether or not you're dealing with someone who's a narcissist or whether you're dealing with someone who you can resolve the relationship with. So number one is that you and your partner just kind of stay clear of each other. You avoid each other. Now this might be in actuality, as in you physically avoid each other, or this could be metaphorical, as in you are in the same room, but you're not really there together. For example, maybe you bust out your cell phone and start typing away to your friends when you're hanging out with your partner alone, or maybe you're just glued to the TV and not really paying attention to each other. Maybe you don't allow time in your schedule to spend time with your partner anymore because you know it will just be so stressful. Maybe it's just about you know that every time you hang out together you're going to argue. Either way, it kind of ends up where you don't spend enough time with your partner and you're avoiding them when you are spending time with them. Number two, you find yourself walking on eggshells. As we all know, this is a common situation in a narcissistic relationship. But even in a regular healthy relationship, you might find yourself walking on eggshells. This could be because you feel as though you irritate your partner for no reason or for some reason, or your partner irritates you when you act a certain way. Now, if you're dealing with a narcissist, chances are you're going to be the one walking on eggshells all the time, and the narcissist will only pretend to walk on eggshells when it serves them to manipulate you. But if you're in a healthier relationship, you might still find yourself walking on eggshells. And this is especially true if you kind of have lost communication and you're just reacting to each other instead of actually communicating. Number three, you stop talking to each other about big decisions. For example, if you find yourself in a position where you get a job offer in another city, you might decide whether or not to take that job offer without talking to your partner first. That's a bad thing. So anytime you're making a big decision in a healthy relationship, you would talk to your partner about it, especially if it involves moving into a different city, right? So if you're dealing with that, it's a, it's a red flag. Now, if you're dealing with a narcissist, they're going to make these decisions for you sometimes. So they'll go, yeah, I'll take that job. And then they'll come home and say, we're moving to Texas tomorrow or whatever, without even consulting you because they don't care how you feel. 
They don't care that you just started a new business that's thriving in Ohio. They just want what they want. And so there's the difference. Number four, you don't discuss your feelings. So this could be, in the case of a narcissist, you might not discuss your feelings because you're afraid of them or because you know that they never validate your feelings. Or in a healthier relationship, you might not discuss your feelings because you just stop discussing your feelings. You kind of grow used to each other and you assume that you know everything. They assume they know everything and nobody actually talks anymore. Sometimes you'll see a simple shift in behavior in a healthy relationship and it might just be that you start doing something different to deal with your stress or your anxiety rather than talking with your partner. Sometimes it'll be that you're focusing on personal goals that have nothing to do with your relationship and you just become distracted by those. That's pretty normal. But if you want to keep the relationship healthy, take a look at this and go, should I be talking to my partner more? Now again, if you're dealing with a narcissist, this is not going to be helpful to you because the narcissist doesn't really want to hear what you have to say unless it's, oh my God, you're so amazing. So keep that in mind. If your partner previously was very chatty and shared their feelings easily with you and now they're not all of a sudden, if you don't have a lot of red flags of narcissism, it might be worth sitting down with that person and discussing why have we made these changes in our relationship? What has changed? What is different? If both of you or either of you are suddenly avoiding physical contact, that's another sign that you're not connecting and communicating the way you should. Again, if you're dealing with a narcissist, this is just one more step closer to the door. If you're dealing with a healthy relationship, then it might be time for you to take a moment and spend some time together. And number five, it's all about the ultimatum. If you are giving an ultimatum every five minutes or your partner's giving an ultimatum every five minutes, that's a red flag that there's a problem. That means somebody has gotten to the point where they're done communicating. If that is the case, you won't negotiate, your partner won't negotiate, ask yourself who you're dealing with. If you're dealing with someone who is a narcissist, then everything they do will reflect the fact that they are self-centered and that they don't care how you feel. But if you're dealing with a healthy person, you're going to see something a little different. You're going to see someone who does care about how you feel, but they've become incredibly frustrated by something and nobody's willing to bend in the relationship. So if you're not willing to compromise and your partner's not willing to compromise, that's a red flag. How do you resolve this? Well, if you're not dealing with a narcissist, then what you can do is sit down and and figure out why you've come to this stalemate. What, is it really so important to one or the other of you to have things your way? And if it is, then find out, is that workable in your relationship? If you're dealing with a narcissist, there's no point in attempting to negotiate because the narcissist will only do what the narcissist feels is best for their own interest. They don't compromise. So the definition of compromise includes you know, both parties bending and both parties benefiting and coming out satisfied with the outcome. It's not compromise if you just do what the, your partner wants and you don't get anything out of the deal. You, the only thing you've got out of the deal is the partner doesn't get mad at you. You see what I mean? Here are a few key differences to watch for the next time you're considering getting involved with someone new after you've gone through a toxic relationship. Number one, the insta love factor. A narcissist will almost always proclaim love or soulmate status very early in the relationship. This will almost always lead to an insta commitment on their part. Insta love is your first clue that you might be getting involved with a narcissist. A healthy person will take their time getting to know you before rushing into things. To be fair, there are a few real life cases of love at first sight that are totally legit. But if we're being honest with ourselves, those are really few and far between. It's not realistic. And if this person is really your one, they aren't going to mind taking things slowly. Which brings me to number two, the time factor. The narcissist might say, oh my gosh, I just want to spend every second of every day with you. You know, as they roll over and stroke your face as you wake up together for the third time, 76 hours into your first date or whatever. But a more healthy person might say something like, gosh, I can't stop thinking about you. I hope you're having a good day when they're texting you on their lunch break after you had an amazing third date. You see the difference? When you meet a narcissist, you can find yourself completely and absolutely bowled over and just wowed by their level of awesome. So much so that you feel like all you feel like doing is being near them. And the truth is that the very same thing can happen with a healthy new love interest too. The difference is that while a healthy relationship can and often does have an infatuation phase, it also still allows you to stay involved with other important parts of your life. 
your family, your work, your spirituality, etc. It does not require you or beg you to dump people in your life in order to avoid missing anything in the relationship. A healthy relationship encourages you to stay involved with your real life. A narcissist demands every moment. A narcissist is going to want you to become dependent on them because this allows them to become dependent on you, my friend, as a source of narcissistic supply. A healthy person might want to spend every moment with you. They might really want that, but they're going to understand and even support your need to continue with your regular life while you get to know each other. Even if it means they tag along with you for your family events and outings and things like that, or with your friends sometimes, it does not require you to stop living your own life. That is a big red flag of narcissistic behavior. That brings me to number three, the drama factor. When you're dealing with a narcissist, there are so many red flags early in the relationship, one of which is often the drama factor. Narcissists often shock you early in the relationship with some strangely little placed outburst or fit and one that'll be quickly righted and for which sometimes they'll even apologize. Maybe for example, they'll blow up at a waiter a little too aggressively when the food shows up cold, or maybe they'll be super mean to a friend or a relative on the phone and you'll be shocked by this. And if you question question them or you mention their behavior, they will explain it away by explaining why they're justified in their treatment of that person. You know, like, oh, well, that person owed me money for 15 years. They deserve whatever they get. Or she's always headed out for me. In any case, it's never the narcissist's fault. While a normal person might have a drama moment here and there, they're more understandable and they're not quite so world stopping as those experienced under the reign of a narcissist. A narcissist will create drama where it doesn't need to be and will break down over the tiniest issues. They might break down if something major happens. You know, they lose their job or their friend dies or their dog dies or something else that any average person, including yourself, might also feel like breaking down about. But a normal person won't freak out if they ask you for some money to buy a soda and you don't have any change. You see what I mean? A narcissist would. That brings me to number four, the empathy factor. If you're in an early relationship with a narcissist, there are little subtle things that happen in your conversations that can kind of tip you off if you watch for them. Simple patterns that will be evident if you know what to notice. One of the biggest is how empathetic the narcissist is capable of being. Watch what happens when someone in your life or the narcissist's life experiences pain or tragedy in their lives. Watch how the narcissist behaves. You can tell when someone is genuinely concerned versus when someone's being sort of polite about things, right? A narcissist can be a really good actor and they might even be really good at follow-up questions when they're in the love bombing phase. But when things are back to normal, a narcissist will change the subject if the topic varies from anything that interests them, often rudely or by creating a big scene to get the attention back on themselves. If you're the one dealing with the trouble, a healthy person who's really into you will show genuine concern when someone you care about is hurt or goes through a hard time. They will never make the pain or the tragedy all about them. Instead, they're going to stand by you in whatever way is appropriate at that phase in your relationship, whether that means stepping back to allow you time to deal with the issue or to grieve with your family, or it means to literally stand by you physically while you go through it. If your love interest is the one dealing with the trouble, they will be concerned as much as you might be in a similar situation and they will want you to stand by them in whatever way is appropriate at that level in your relationship. While a narcissist will want you to feel sorry for them while you baby and spoil them to help end the pain, whether it's their personal pain or not, it'll be all about the narcissist, not the person actually experiencing the issue. So what are the best ways to avoid narcissists in relationships? So here are three easy steps that you can take to avoid becoming involved with a narcissist in the future. It's so simple and you won't even believe it, but I promise you it works. Number one, you have to take your time in the relationship. Make a rule for yourself that you won't go too fast or commit too soon in any relationship. For example, after I left my ex-husband, I made a rule for myself that I would not allow anyone to propose to me until we'd been monogamously dating for at least one year. Then I decided that I'd make it a long engagement just to be safe. To avoid getting involved with a narcissist in the future, just take your time getting to know a new romantic interest. Go slowly. Set your own rules based on your own perception of how long it took you to recognize that you were dealing with a narcissist in the first place this time. This can apply to literally any personal relationship and even to professional ones on certain levels. That is, you sort of maintain your guard in each type of relationship for an appropriate length of time before you assume you can trust anyone. And that brings me to number two, you've got to stay connected to the other people in your life. In order to keep your life in balance and to protect yourself from getting enmeshed with another narcissist, you really need 
need to be careful to still actively cultivate relationships with a variety of people in your life, even and especially when you're in the beginning phases of the new relationships and friendships. Remember how bad it felt when you were isolated from everyone by the narcissist? Well, this is the time that you need to be especially vigilant of staying connected. And listen, I don't care how in love you are and I don't care how much you think it's your idea to stay in bed for 17 days straight and ignore your phones at the beginning of a relationship. Don't do it. Promise yourself that you're going to have regular contact with the other important healthy people in your life even if you need to schedule that time. So schedule your contact with your friends, with your family, to avoid getting sucked in by another narcissist. Narcissists won't tolerate it when you are connected to other people. So get yourself connected to a good support network and stick with them. And consider having maybe a recovery buddy who will check in with you on a regular basis and help you remember to remain connected to your network of support and love. This will help you to ensure that you don't inadvertently fall into your your old patterns. It can happen before you realize it. That brings me to number three, listen to your gut. Remember when you got involved with your narcissist and you felt a little off, but you couldn't quite put your finger on it? Or maybe you never felt quite comfortable in the relationship and you kind of always felt like you might lose it at any moment. Maybe you lived in fear of being alone or falling flat without the narcissist. Well, this is another really important part of protecting yourself from getting involved with a person like this. You've got to listen to your gut. You've got to listen to your heart, those feelings that creep up inside you when you don't want to listen to them. It doesn't matter how exciting and how amazing someone is when you first meet them. You have to listen to your heart. You have to listen to your gut if you're going to stay safe. If something doesn't feel right, there is a reason for it. And if you're not sure, just go back to number one. Take your time. There's really no reason to rush. If it's truly a healthy and mutually satisfying good relationship and the person you've been waiting for all of your life, time should be of no concern. Take your time getting to know each other and enjoy the process. It can be deliciously satisfying if you let it. If you take your time and you have found your one, time is never an issue. Just remember that you deserve better and remember that as they say, there are plenty of fish in the sea. Taking your time in a relationship shouldn't be a concern for you, but someone who wants to push you to go faster than you're ready should. It's just one of many signs of love bombing over actual love. All right, now this brings me to the question of the day. And the question of the day is, have you ever experienced love bombing or idealization? And have you also experienced any healthier relationships at the beginning? And what differences did you see? Or if not, what are your thoughts about all of this? Share your thoughts, share your ideas, share your experiences in the comment section below. And let's talk about it. As always, thank you so much for being a part of my day and a part of my life. And hey, Thanks for letting me be a part of yours. It really does mean a lot to me. Now, before I go, make sure you take a look at the videos I'm going to leave for you here and there. And while you're here, hit the subscribe button right there so we can stay connected and continue on this healing journey together. I'll see you soon.